since being joined by the Chief of Defense Staff, General Christopher Musa. Thank you so much indeed. There's so much to talk about tonight. But I will allow you uh, some kind of opening statement on what would you say from the defense point of view. Uh, of course, the, uh, uh, the man that uh, superintend and uh, does uh, from the House of, uh, House, uh, House of Reps is here, Honorable Jimmy Benson. But from the operational point of view, can you tell us what is the major, major issue? The minister is now so much involved in internal policy. It does, it, it does look like you are being taken away from your primary assignment and you are doing secondary and leaving the primary. What would you say is your major problem military-wide? Thank you very much. Um, I'm really very happy to be here and it's good to be with this uh, forum today. Uh, well, I think as Nigerians, first and foremost, we need to take ownership of what's going on in the country. And when I say ownership, it is not a time for us to start trading blames on who to do it. We are dealing with asymmetric warfare, which is a new kind of warfare. It's different from the conventional term. And that's what we want to make very clear. Conventional warfare between country to country. Now, asymmetric warfare, you are dealing with non-state actors, people you don't know, people that are your own. I give you some examples. Sometimes when we go on cordon and search operations, the same village you get in, they hide the weapons, Actually, them, they don't have anything, and you proceed. And they dig out these weapons and fire you from the, from the rear. It is difficult, because you don't even know who is your enemy. Every is an enemy, there is no front. Everywhere, and you know, is a front as long as, uh, as much as possible. Now, the challenges we're having is that understanding. I'm happy that uh, it is changing. And if you see from what the armed forces and the police are doing now, we are being very people-centric in our approach. Because we understand that asymmetric warfare has to do with the people. Wherever we are protecting, wherever we are guiding, wherever we are operating, if we don't have the buy-in of the people, then there's a big challenge. And that's the problem. Now, why do we have challenges in the country? It did not start now. It has started since. My advice always is no country should allow asymmetric warfare to commence. It is difficult to eradicate. Why? You are dealing with ideology. And once you have that ideology built in, it's difficult because you see the person, you don't know what he's thinking about. You don't know what's in his mind. We have seen people that we have told them, they are still telling us that we are wrong and they are right, as it is. So we need to come together as a country to be able to tackle this. And it should be nipped in the board for every country, I advise. CDS, yes. it's almost 20 years that the military has been in the Northeast. Yes. Have you been able to win the war? 15 war. Well, it's not, that's why I'm saying asymmetric warfare is not, the only time you know that you've won the war is when there's total restoration of civilian authority. Total. When everybody's in. And I can tell you, I was the theater commander in Operation Hadenkei for 19 months. By the time I left there, we had over 75,000 that have surrendered. Now we have over 120. To tell you that we are succeeding. For us to know that it is total. One of the areas where we have challenge, the issue of good governance. Asymmetric warfare has a direct flux to do with good governance. Why? If your people can't eat, if they don't have, if they're unemployed, you these are recipes that will always have where you have people that want to own up. On average, on a daily basis, all the theater operations we have, we, we take out over six hundred bandits, terrorists, insurgents on a weekly basis. But I tell you, over two thousand are coming in. And why is that so? We have they can from everywhere. If you move into rural areas, we don't have roads. Where I have my men have the greatest challenge is IEDs because there are no road infrastructure. So those are the areas that we have, and that's why this war is an old society approach. So it's not, it's not time yet for the military to leave the northeast. No, like I said, it's an ongoing operation. We are doing the best we can together with the police and all that. But what we are calling is, is the buy-in of Nigerians. Let us stop this aspect of saying it is a it's a military or is a security no it is everybody's response until we you see you protect what you love until nigerians start loving nigeria i mean you see as people come in and castigating the president or castigating the nation as a whole you're not doing anybody any good and they get that power of words in what you see efforts have been made for the past one year things have actually improved greatly we are not where we are it's not where we want to but at where we are moving was where we have issues Equipments that we want to use because we don't produce what we need is a major challenge.
But we, we understand that the Daikon law... Which is what is happening the now. Honorable yes, the about process it. is on now. But there are local publications... The process is on. We're also publicizing them, and that's what we're doing. But it's we're not enough. It's not, no, definitely it's not enough. We have a population of over 200, a land mass of over 900,000. It's not easy. The whole of Sambisa alone is more than some European countries as a whole. The whole of Niger State. Niger State takes almost 10% of Nigerian uh, land mass. It's massive. Now, over time... We left the forest empty. Border management has not been too good. Those are areas where these guys took advantage of and, and they are using. And that's why I said good governance does a lot in mobilizing the people, the citizens, to understand that, yes, this is my country. I'm ready to die for my country. And that's why it's key. How do we get our leadership critical? We must find leaders that are really committed. Committed in the sense that Nigeria grow nigeria must develop and that's why some of the some of the uh, security challenges we're having some of them are mostly are political some are economic some are social now you take you through the 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 tree of, of of criminality once acts of criminality there's no that is old once it starts with criminality it gets to robbery it moves up insurgency now in them and they can't operate the next thing it to criminality and that's why you get into it to banditry and because it's a social effect people are looking for money i'm sure you have read where family members are kidnapping family members and for we have seen a situation where an individual kidnapped himself all for what to make money so that's why it is the society must develop beyond that and sometimes when i hear people trying to compare with america we are not america we are different people why is the chinese procedure chinese understand that you must understand your environment every law you want to create understand who you are it guides you because we're different our cultures our traditions our distance are different but we see we seem to carry everything hook line and sinker it's america no we need to develop as a nation uh, serious yes. just a moment because uh, i know there are about four people in the room that are standing by uh, you could go to your microphone so that we can take some questions now uh, but quickly your the radicalization uh, mechanisms yeah. and some of the efforts in getting the former Boko Haram insurgent, those who said they have repented, yeah. and that those who have questioned your system. And I'd like to ask you, does it work? Has it worked? It is working very well. You, I mean, you, you know, initially, you know, I, I, was the, I, was, I was the commander when it started. We were the ones that started. And every process we did, we worked together with the state because the state had the authority on ground. Before it started, when we communicated with them, they were willing to surrender. The state were the one that actually took the mantle, and we followed up. Everyone that surrendered came first to the security forces that were closest to them. They were disarmed. We got the, uh, the DSS to profile them. The state government provides the management and administration of those people, and we took them to their camps. We were able to separate them. We sorted them out. We have, you know, what we realize is that not all of them are combatants. That's one key area. There are some of them that were conscripted. Some were forced. In those days, when they attacked the village, they gather everybody and take you. Some they were enslaved, they were used as farmers, laborers, and whatever. So we're able to sort those ones. The main ones that were, that, that were the actual uh, uh, operators were kept separately. And what is being done is some of them now working together with the, with the victims because it is critical. Most times we tend to forget the victims, concentrating more on the people because we want peace. We don't want that kind of peace. We have had operation, we have operated in Sierra Leone, in other countries. We've seen how it is. The tendency is you concentrate more on the perpetrators and forget the victims. So we always carry the victims. The communities were the ones that before anybody is allowed to go back, the communities will decide that, determine that, yes, this person had nothing to do with it. Because the good thing again for Borno says everybody did themselves. So it was a lot easier for us to do. And then we now use the issue of the civil engineering. Why is important? Because I had the Zamfara State government was talking about it. Why it's different in Borno State is that it was properly carried out. We had the communities where the ones who identified the youths, the positive youths, the good youths that really loved the country, they were profiled, they were brought out, the DSS profiled them, the military gave them some little training with the mandate to protect their communities. That was the mandate, not to attack anybody, but to protect their communities. And that's why you see in Borno State that is working. Now, in other areas, if they want to implement, because of the differences we have in ethnicity, in tribes, and other things that have been there, if we don't handle it properly, by the time you have these groups together, they will start attacking other communities because they have already issued 
ground. That is, and that's why it's dangerous. Yeah, before we started this program, and we told, we asked Nigerians, what would you say is the security agency's biggest challenge? We say, is it a lack of manpower? Secondly, we say, is it corruption and political will, a funding, or lack of intelligence? And this is how Nigerians who are polled. They say 82% of the, of the Nigerians who polled says uh, it's corruption and political will. Uh, some, uh, the, the, large, the, the ones that follow say uh, lack of intelligence. And another one, funding and lack of power. But corruption and I'm political asking will. question. I will allow the CDS to comment on the terrorism funding issue I was raised by the lady. What? Thank, thank you very much. The funding, funding is critical. Trails the money. Trail the money. That's always the issue. Now we have areas of funding, both locally and internationally. For the local aspects, they have a means of, they have their followers that they've empowered that contribute money to what they are doing. They go through banditry, some of them get benefit from taxes. All these things they do from within, that the kidnappings is all part of it where they raise funds. And then externally, we have external people that equally support them. The issue of IPOB. There's a lot of funding that yeah, comes CBS, in there. CBS. Yes. Are you worried? Uh, because you know an operation, of course, have definitely. a special operation on the sit at home IPOP situation in the southeast. Yes. But some of the elements and the leaders of these groups are outside of the country. Yes. We have repeatedly complained about the issue of Samuel Epa. He is in Finland. The Finnish government are giving him all the support and he's doing what he's doing. Comments he's making. People are being killed. And nothing has been done. And this is democracy. If the European Union is the one supporting democracy and this is happening and they are not taking action, then they don't mean well for Nigeria. We have said that in clear terms. We need to diplomatically find means of getting him out of whatever it is that he's doing. He must be arrested. He must be prosecuted. Look at it from the other way. Assuming he is in Nigeria and he's doing that to the Finnish government, you think the European Union will allow that happen? They definitely will not. So why are they allowing him to do what he's doing? And likes people like him that are doing such things. Trailing the funds is very critical. I know a lot of the First Central Bank, the NFIU, are doing a lot in tra tracking down how the funds flow. And this is part of what we call the oxygen of terrorism, is logistic, leadership, and funding. Your ability to be able to tackle those things and trail them and deny them the ability to operate will kill terrorism with good governance. Now, you can see the, the, the statistics that came in, political will. And political will is not from federal government alone. The states, the states are critical. For me, if I look at the aspects, what do we need? Let's look at solutions. Do we have a comprehensive database as Nigerians? If you go to Chad, Cameroon, and Niger, once you enter, they know you are not a Nigerian. And they have this duty as citizens. Once you speak, the man knows you are not a Nigerian. The next thing he tells you, if he's a taxi driver, he tells you his vehicle has a problem. Is calling the gendarmes. Before you know it, the gendarmes are coming to ask you, what are you doing in our country? We don't have that. That's what we're saying. It's a holistic thing that we have to do. Every Nigerian has a role to play in what's going on on the ground. And then we must look at these things and take it up as a challenge. It's not a military or a security uh, aspect. Everybody has a role to play in this. And that's what I'm saying. We need to develop a database. Why is Nigerians. it difficult? We have a database. And I can mention 10 agencies of government. That is where it's a problem. They That's started. why it's a problem. Do you remember that former President Gula Jonathan came out of a meeting at the State House and asked all of the uh, data uh, acquiring uh, agencies to, uh, to put their data together up until tomorrow? That has not happened. I know you have. we collect your yes. data. Uh, immigration, we collect your data. Um, uh, local government, we collect your data. FRS, we collect your data. NIPSI, we collect your data. In fact, they will almost ask for the, uh, for the ID of your kidney if you want to get things done in the bank, but yet nothing is being used or done with the data. And you imagine a terrorist will come into our country. We are not able to track them and trace them with mobile telephone that if as an ordinary citizen you want to register, it becomes a major problem. As, as, as CBS, why is it difficult that we are not able to... For security purposes, not able to house our data in one in one place. 
Uh, well, I think that's a political question you're asking. I'm not a politician or <laughs> a military man, so I can only deal with those issues. Going. Well, you see, what I'm saying is that the truth about it is that as a nation, we need to build up. And how do we do that? Census. If we can have just one comprehensive census that will cover out for all Nigerians in the world, not only in Nigeria, or at, in the entire world, build up that capacity, and then every other thing we do can leverage on that. When you go abroad and things happen and they get people arrested, they're not using witchcraft. They have data. So why is, we should have such things. And like I said, the state government was talking about political will. It starts from the states. The states have a lot they can do. Why are our local governments not working? So you see in a state with 20 local governments, everybody is looking at the governor. It makes it very difficult. But if we have 20 local government and 20 local government chairmen that have the capacity as being governors, because that's also another issue. Sometimes you have the local government chairman, the man doesn't even know why he's there. So it becomes an issue. So we must look at how, we, how do we develop our leaders, especially local government. Growing up, we knew local governments were working. You go there, you see the veterinary working, you see them doing roads and all this. And so it builds up that capacity and it checkmates all these activities right from the board before it goes to, to become a monster. But we allow it until when it becomes a monster and then it becomes difficult to curtail it. And those are the issues we have to go on ground. And then, like I said, justice, equity, and fairness. Every Nigerian must have that sense of belonging wherever he is. I had the privilege I was born in Sokoto, I grew up in Sokoto. I had that privilege. It was the most wonderful place I ever wanted to. And, and, and I still am very proud to have come from that area. And it has given me with the opportunity to further that the government has given me in Nigeria. And that's why in the military, it gives us that ability to look at these things dispassionately. We look at how do we create solution? How do we provide solution on this? The challenges we're going cannot be solved by military solution or security solution. It is holistic. Most of it non-kinetic and non-kinetic has to do with good governance right. it starts from the states the states must take ownership of this and drive it yes uh, there are a few people who are asking questions about the era that the military willing to take that uh, give to the nigerian no, no definitely tonight because innocent people are just living their lives and no i think we've said it over, we've gone. said it over time when the tudumbri issue happened we came out clearly and said it was a mistake it was a professional mistake Yes, we don't want to give a reason why it happened. We knew why it happened sometimes because, again, if you look at the history, it is not just that it was deliberately done. It was just that there were circumstances that happened that made it happen. Have we learned our lesson? A lot. A lot. We've gone back to training. with anybody organized. been held accountable? Uh, we have our court marshals on ground. going through. We followed through the legal system directly. We don't say. We're a professional and we've done things even outside Nigeria. So why not in our own country? We go through these things. And like, let me tell you, once there are operations ongoing, they are bound to be mistaken because we're human beings. Sometimes you fire a weapon, the weather affects it. You can't control that. Serious. I'm worried. Yes. And a lot of people, I'm responding directly to questions yeah. Yeah. that people are asking online. There are those who are worried that the accusation and allegations against men of the Nigerian Navy okay. on issues of piracy, yeah. that they are in cahoot and they are in connivance with some of these people who are stealing our crew and maybe, not allowing our economy to grow. Maybe in the past. It's not happening now again. Maybe in the past. Now, we, nothing is 100%. And we pick our recruits from the citizens, from the communities. We're not bringing them from heaven or from somewhere. So whatever it is that is ongoing will also affect the armed forces. But we have a system that check makes that. And that's why all our operations, we have standing court marshals. Just recently, we've called Marshall some, we'll jail them, we'll dismiss, we'll reduce them in rank. We don't, we don't entertain in discipline for but whatever reason. I mean, are you able to tell Nigerians what you are doing? Because no. some of Nigerians are the ones that are bearing the brunt. But yeah. if those who are responsible are being dealt with, mm. Nigerians deserve the, uh, to know. No, but, but I think on several occasions, even when I was in the, in the theater in Maiduguri, we announce, we do, we do a media chat where we pronounce what are the offenses committed and what, what the actions have been taken. We do that in clear terms. All right. And if we get the police, the prison, yeah, they will tell you the military people that have been that have been jailed for issues on that. We do that such. All right. Such as. Give me 